Welcome to yet another episode of Sensible Second Hand Reviews. Today we're in a 2017 Scanner Rapid Spaceback 1.2 TSI S. If we're looking at cars that you can buy in a decent condition with an MOT for between one and five thousand pounds, this has to be a candidate for one of the best value cars out there. This car actually belongs to my uncle, and uh, I'm here driving through the streets of Sheffield. And it's actually pretty pleasant. It reminds me a lot of the, say, at Toledo that we used to have because the Skoda Rapid and the say, at Toledo Mark IV, or rather, I should say, the, the, the current generation of Rapid because this car is still sold um, in some parts of the world although it was discontinued for uh, British market in 2019. Um, it's got a rapid space back was uh, made on the same production line as the Toledo and the normal uh, Skoda Rapid. There actually were two versions of this car, one uh, which is a very kind of large fastback design which looks a lot like a saloon but it isn't, it is a hatchback and the fast, the non-fastback, the sort of just normal looking hatchback, I think most people will call it, which is called a rapid spaceback. Ironically, the rapid spaceback has <laughs> over 100 litres best spoot space than the normal rapid. It's about 415 litres as opposed to 550. But the boot on a rapid or a, um, a Toledo is absolutely enormous. It's by far the biggest boot in sort of the small family class. The Exterior dimensions of this car are smaller than, say, a, a Ford Focus Mark III, and yet there's more interior space, which is pretty remarkable, actually. The engine lineup from launch in 2013 had three 1.2 engines, 75, 85, and 105 horsepower. In 2015, the 85 brake horsepower version was upgraded to 90 horsepower. This is a 90 horsepower version. And then in 2017, just after this car was uh, was made, there was a, a mild face of the Rapid and Space I, I, I can't honestly tell the difference between pre and post facelift cars most of the time. It it was more likely really that you get a you know LED headlamps and things like that on the, the facelift ones. They weren't made for very long. They made about 18 months actually, um, and the 1.2 engines were dropped entirely, all of them, to be replaced by two one-liter engines. The 110 horsepower version of that one-liter engine, which only has three cylinders, was also used in the UK market Toledo. But there was also an additional, um, less powerful version used in Rapid and Rapid Spaceback, which had 95 horsepower. You could get that one with automatic transmission. A weird anomaly, and the, the fastest um, Rapid Spaceback ever, was actually the um, 1.4 that was sold until about 2017, 122 horsepower. That was only available with an automatic gearbox. If you want to kind of... A, but it was sporty, rapid, or rapid space back. Your best bet's probably though the um, 110 horsepower one liter TSI. But that's because it's a lot of six speed manual gearbox. This 90 brake horsepower 1.2, it only has a five speed gearbox. But then again, that's maybe all you need. And it might seem a bit austere, and you know, we'll have a look interior a little bit more later on but this car is really growing on me in the same way that my old set Toledo did. We had one of those uh, 2017 model from 2017 because I bought it brand new until uh, July 2020 so I do know these cars quite well. 
There's also something else I know, and uh, it's the fact that there were also some diesel models, but as usual, we don't talk about diesels on this channel. So here we are, viewers. Uh, just pulled into a rather large car park, um, which uh, allows me to have a look at the rapid space back in a little bit more detail. So the front end, well, this being the S model, which is absolute bottom of the range, there's really not a lot to see. Uh, there's no fog lights or anything. There's no LED daytime running lights or anything like that. We've just got plastic wheel trims. And that's about it, really. To be honest, though, uh, a lot of people who bought Rapids and Rapid space backs, that's the kind of thing that they wanted. They didn't want anything fancy. And uh, the portions of the car are just sort of clean. Uh, it's kind of neat looking, really. There's not a lot exciting about this, unless you went for one of the upper trim models like an SE Sport. There was, uh, I think, a Monte Carlo version available um, of Rapid as well. Doesn't say space back on a back or anything like that. It just says Rapid. No parking sensors or anything with this model. You needed to go up actually quite a long way to get standard parking sensors on a Rapid. It was really strange. Loads and loads of the things that you expect to be uh, kind of standard on a higher trim version of these were optional. And that was one of the things. So it boots 415 uh, liters and I believe under here we do have a spare wheel and it's a full-size one too full-size spare wheel How often do you see one of those in a car for 2017? boot light as well Well in this model we don't have the sort of enormous big um, Shopping bag hooks that you get in the other ones. You don't get them in this car. It's really strange and You have to go up further up the range to get them you also it's got a, a sort of reversible boot floor with adjustable height in some of them, but this isn't equipped with the adjustable height boot floor. On the reverse, you'd have a sort of a kind of weatherproof surface, sort of rubber rubber lining. One thing that's very nice is that you, there's a little sort of thing to pull the boot down because if you're if you're not particularly tall, it's quite difficult to reach that. Although you don't need anything like electric boot opening. Standard thing on a Skoda, of course, many years, which isn't actually here. I think uh, my uncle's put that somewhere else. That's where the uh, ice scraper should go. One of the main things about, me, about these cars, and I'll just uh, move my grand, sorry, my uncle's road right atlas out the way, is that the space is back is really good. I've got absolutely loads of, of headroom. I've got even more headroom than in the standard Rapid or Toledo. It's a bit mean they don't give you uh, map pockets on the back, so the Atlas has to go on the floor. That's, that's really annoying. Also, no rear armrest and no electric rear windows. But then, again, you ask yourself if you're buying this sort of car, do you need electric rear windows? Do you need a rear armrest? Perhaps you don't. Perhaps you don't really need all this extra stuff, and in which case, this car will be fine for you. One thing that's a bit mean, I think this is, this is a case for all variants of the Rapid Amateur and the Spaceback, is that the, the materials are a bit lacking. They're, they're very hard wearing, but they're also very hard, and there's not any material here near where the door pull is. There's a little bit down there, but there's none there at all. So you're just left with this enormous sort of expanse of hard black plastic. It's all very durable and everything, and the door handles feel good, particularly for the price of the car, but it's just a bit kind of austere. Also, um, in the S model, you don't get a centre console um, with, a, with a, an armrest, although, to be honest, Having an armrest in the uh, Atelier that I had was more annoying than it was worth. I used to just push it out of the way. I never used it, although a lot of other people who drove the car did say that they liked it. So just down to your personal preference and, you know, how high up a trim hierarchy you want to go. But, yeah, there's absolutely loads of room in here. 
very comfortable and you can actually when you fold the rear seats which I won't do on camera because it's difficult to fold them and shave with one hand you can put the belt buckle in this little notch just here there you go look it's very handy with the higher trim model if that was um, if there was a rear armrest here you'd also get a ski hatch but of course you don't get that in this one because it's the S model oh, it's so easy to get in and out the rear headroom is actually better than on the standard rapid by some considerable margin that's why it's so easy my uncle's left the floor mats in for me today from his old Volkswagen Golf Mark 3 <laughs> which seemed to fit reasonably well it's actually got a footrest in here as well. It's something I really appreciated when I had my Toledo. Again, uh, the S model, so no automatic lights or wipers or anything like that. Standard Volkswagen controls that have been in everything for ages, like that mirror control. That's been around for a long time. And even the switches to the windows. Only two, of course, because it doesn't have electric rear windows, because it's the S model. And here, just standard air conditioning, incredibly easy to operate, just idiot proof, really. Um, one thing I do like about it, though, this car, even though it's a base model, has telescopic steering wheel adjustment, and it's really comfortable. There's also a um, variable intermittent wiper as well, uh, which is good. I think the glove box will take my secret mission documents. Let's just make sure that it, that it does. The old one used to back in the day. No. No, 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 what, what, no! No! Oh, viewers. No way. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. I've, I've been foiled by the passenger airbag switch. Ma. Now, Porsche models have got things like illuminated door pockets and uh, handles there and a light in the little centre console there, but... No, not on this one. Uh, lots of room to sh shove stuff in there. Because you don't even get a chrome handbrake button in this. That's really me. I can't believe that. Gearbox feels pretty nice. Um, the car's done about 37,000 miles or so. Um, yeah. Uh, no controls on the steering wheel. No leather rim. But, again, do you really need all this fancy stuff? Do you really? I don't think so. Let's turn that on. Oh, why is the wiper, rear wiper on? I should have just uh, actually done that. You actually can play songs from um, a, uh, a memory card. And it uh, looks like we've got some Fleetwood Mac going on. No sat nav, of course, on this base model, but it has the colour screen. It's brilliant. It's really good. On the high spec models, this central screen would cycle through things like average fuel economy and stuff like that but uh yeah we don't get that on this because we don't have any control to cycle through so that's just kind of what it says well if we go into car and setup we actually might see yes we do we've actually got um long term he's getting 49 miles per gallon that's really good it's excellent fuel economy and uh, you can control things in the setup of the screen. It's not particularly advanced or anything, but it's there. And yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. I think we have to go to media. We've just got to keep that radio off for copyright reasons. Hard plastic on the dash, of course. Um, I don't think there are any soft touch plastics in here. My Toledo used to have a big uh, strip up there uh, in Piano Black, so in Toledo up there, and a few more sort of bits and pieces. But again, don't think you need anything like that, do you? Oh, I'd actually deleted the sunglasses holder as well. It's all a bit mean, isn't it? Was... <laughs> no chrome handbrake button and no sunglasses holder. Strange little things to uh, to remove, isn't it? Right, let's have a look at the engine. And here we are. It's the 1.2 TSI engine, which develops 90 horsepower. There is the coolant reservoir that's been on Volkswagen things for absolutely donkey's years, I think back to the mid 90s. Likewise, things like the dipstick and all filler cap. And there's, there's not really 
a lot to it. But the biggest engine you get on one of these was actually a 1.6 with the, the uh, forbidden fuel engine, which we won't talk about. But it means you've got quite a lot of space to get to what you need to get to. Generally, these engines are quite reliable. It's always difficult for me to remember whether these engines have a cam belt or they have a, a chain cam. Certainly the, the one litre a TSI has a wet timing belt and that's not necessarily the best thing. I, I would just be a bit careful about that and make sure that, that that timing belt is in good condition and you change it regularly. Sometimes these 1.2s are chain cam, sometimes they're uh, cam belts, sometimes they're a mixture of a two actually, which is utterly, utterly bizarre. But uh, just whichever one of these cars you're buying, just uh, if it does have a cam belt, just make sure it's uh, been changed regularly. Other than that, they're not they're not bad really. These engines at all, they're, they're pretty reliable. Um, that's why a lot of people love these cars. One thing that I'm remembering about the set Toledo Mark IV we used to have. It's just how comfortable the car was, and this is also really comfortable. Drum position is really, really good, particularly because of the telescopic adjustment that comes as standard. Yeah, the handbrake uh, sort of makes a bit of a noise when I pull it on for some reason. I don't know why. While we're stuck, uh, we sort of lights, all the start stops working. Uh, the trim levels available on one of these were S, like this, SE, SE Sport. SE Tech, Elegance, which was the top of the range for a time. Uh, the black edition, which is like a special edition with black wheels, I believe. And then the green line. Uh, that was generally used for the forbidden fuel version. So I shouldn't talk about that much for too long, should I? Now, what's really strange about, about this car is that the petrol one litre versions are actually more economical than the forbidden fuel ones. And of course the fuel in this country anyway is actually cheaper um, to buy. So why you would even want a forbidden fuel rapid at all, particularly as they don't tend to come with a uh, six speed gearbox if you if you choose a manual is beyond me. I would just go for a petrol version. The ride and handling of these is 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 actually quite good. The the ride feels very very good. I, I think the car that we had had a bit of a firm ride because it was on something like 17 inch wheels. This is on um, little steel wheels with hubcaps, and so the ride's nice and soft. The steering's very light. You don't get an awful lot of feedback mm -hmm. through it, but it's it's very easy to park and you know drive around in town. And so that's another reason to choose one of these cars. They're not of unmanageable size. You do get a lot more boot space than the standard Rapid or the Toledo variant, but if you don't need it, it's a bit more manageable because the <laughs> those are really long cars and you do need front and rear parking centers really if you're somebody like me to park them. This one, I don't think you do need those. Another advantage of taking a rapid space back over the standard rapid is that you had this option of a rear tailgate where the glass kind of blended into the metal of a sort of black panel. It's, it's, it's difficult to describe but if you see a Skoda Scala with that you'll know what I mean or just one of these um, uh, sort of higher out of the range because it was an option on a lot of the trims. But yeah, it's, it's a thoroughly pleasant experience, a thoroughly pleasant car, very economical. You can get them fixed anywhere. It's, you know, in some ways it's quite difficult to find a case not to buy one of these. But I know some of you don't really like Volkswagen Group products, and so that might be a reason to not buy one. But some of you do, and from that point of view, you know, it doesn't feel as luxurious as something like a Golf or a Leon or something like that. And of course, if you want something even more spacious, you can buy an Octavia. But this will do for a, a vast number of people. And, it, you know, my uncle didn't like it first when he got it. 
but now he really likes it and he'll probably keep it for a long time. I think that says it all. So viewers, the Skoda Rapid Spaceback, is this something that you should consider for your hard-earned cash of between one and five thousand pounds? It kind of depends on the sort of person that you are. Um, if every above everything else you value just hard wearing quality, ease of use, and you know, really quite low maintenance on something, then this would be a fantastic car. You can get better trim versions of this. You can get the Toledo or the normal Rapid, which have even more boot space and just have that saloon type profile. Um, if you want something that looks a bit different or something a bit more luxurious. But for a lot of people, this will be everything that they ever need. Um, it, it's really quite comfortable. Um, it's very spacious. And it just just for the right level of equipment for what you need. Um, it has got Bluetooth. It's got an SD card slot. It's got air conditioning. I mean, what else, what else do you need um, for a lot of modern driving? The car was actually made in quite a few places. Uh, in addition to being made in the Czech Republic along with the Seat Toledo, it was made in Russia, China, the Ukraine, Algeria and Kazakhstan. And in fact, you can still buy one of these um, brand new, even though in most markets this has been replaced with the Scala, which, strangely enough, looks very much like this. They decided to base the replacement for the Rapid and the Toledo on the Spaceback version of the Rapid, Excuse me. They didn't, they didn't actually go for um, the sort of majority sales variant. They went for the minority one, which is interesting. This shows the direction of things, uh, the way it was going and everything. It's weird after three years of being on YouTube that we've ended up in kind of the same place where we started in September 2018 because the set to later we used to have was the first review on the channel. And we're kind of back in the same place again. It's funny how these things work. Anyway, thank you ever so much indeed for watching this episode of Sensible Secondhand Reviews. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below, switch on notifications, that really does help, and social media links are down below. Thank you ever so much indeed once again for watching.